airless, forbidding. The very precision of its operation like a surrealistic dream. We can measure its movement and depth, but our minds cannot fathom its spiritual geometry. There are those among us who can comprehend its physical forces, but in the inner structure of our beings, we have not yet digested its meaning. Impressions of our Earth from space. Swirls of blue and white and green illuminated sharply against a black background. A distant, cold beauty. Silent, lonely, timeless. From high above, seemingly placid. Another more familiar view of Earth, closer, warmer, rich with sound and splashes of color. Timeless too in its way, and also seemingly placid. Standing on the continental divide, two miles high. Colorado River's head, a mountain bow, icy water shed. All snowflake melts on desert land, a crystal flake brings life to a grain. of gentleness hides constant, restless turmoil. Sometimes peaceful, often suddenly and violently not. sense, the Earth has two completely different personalities. One temperament seems calm and benign, well in control of the forces locked within the Earth or playing around its biosphere. The other is a hard, hostile, often deadly nature, a nature racked and tormented by these same forces rampaging out of control. Given names by man, these forces are called tornadoes, tidal waves, earthquakes, hurricanes, blizzards, floods. Having buffeted the earth since it was born, these are natural forces which when they strike populated areas on an increasingly populated planet, become natural disasters affecting people physically and mentally. And as if natural disasters aren't enough, man has added some of his own. 
Disasters whose destructive potential far outstrips anything nature itself has been able to produce. The incredible, awful and sudden power of a nuclear explosion. And the insidious, creeping and in the long run perhaps the most destructive force of all. The thing called pollution. Finally, the forest fire, a hybrid whose origins can be natural, a stroke of lightning on a summer's evening, or man-made, the terrible result of a single act by a careless person, or worse, the terrible result of a single act by an arsonist. Although these destructive forces are created by different sets of conditions, they all have one thing in common. In their wake, they leave indiscriminate devastation. Homes, whole neighborhoods, businesses, sometimes remarkably entire towns and cities are wrecked. Normal life is disrupted. Perhaps worst of all, the frailty of human life is exposed. The power of these forces is so enormous that bodies are broken as easily as children's toys and lives are snuffed out with as little effort as it takes to extinguish a candle. But it is not enough merely to know about the power of these forces. One must also understand the significance of that power because it is from such an understanding that it can hurt you, both physically and mentally, that preparation to minimize their effects, at least on people, must begin. Preparation must begin before an emergency occurs. But to be fully effective, it must continue during and after that emergency. Simply put, preparation is man's manifestation of an instinct as basic as self-preservation. With few exceptions, these disasters give ample warning of their approach. Before an emergency, it is the knowledge of and the ability to recognize these warnings. That is preparation. During an emergency, it is the translation of that knowledge into the proper course of action. That is preparation. It is common sense to listen to the radio to get accurate information on what to do and what is happening. That is preparation. After an emergency, it is knowing precisely what to do. That is preparation. Taken together, these things and others add up to complete preparation. And while there is no guarantee that they will ever be needed, there is no guarantee that they won't either. In an emergency, they offer you your chance to live.
impressions of our Earth from space. Swirls of blue and white and green, illuminated sharply against a black background. A distant, cold beauty, silent, lonely, timeless. From high above, seemingly placid.